Let's be honest, very few people like taking tests, but for some kids, tests can be a major source of anxiety and stress. That can be a big problem because anxiety can make it hard to study, think clearly, and make time-sensitive decisions. All of these skills are essential to a student's performance. So what causes test anxiety and how can we help kids manage it? Though all kids are likely to feel anxious about upcoming tests sometimes, for some kids, test anxiety is a real fact of life and can be very impairing. Test anxiety often goes hand in hand with learning disorders or learning issues. Children who have ADHD or a learning disorder are often already feeling anxious about school, and when it's time to take a test, that sense can be heightened. The issues caused by learning disorders can wreak havoc on kids at school and make tests especially hard. If you have trouble concentrating, if you have trouble getting organized, managing time, things like that are consistent with ADHD and can make studying really difficult, and test days even harder. Difficulties in reading, math, or language can leave kids feeling far behind their peers and struggling to keep up. These very real struggles create anxiety. If you have ADHD, for example, just knowing you're going into a situation where you have to focus, manage your time, remember information, and get it done before the bell can cause serious anxiety. It's not just kids with learning differences who struggle with test anxiety. Many kids worry they won't do well on tests. Kids may face pressure from parents, family, or teachers to perform well. Others may already be struggling with anxiety issues or worry about making mistakes or performing in general, from singing in music class to going to bat at baseball which can make tests feel particularly terrifying. The common denominator is that kids who think they aren't going to do well tend to feel more anxious about taking tests. Kids with low self-esteem or kids who lack confidence in their abilities are often more likely to be anxious. And since anxiety can affect the skills that kids or teens need to do well on tests, fast and flexible thinking, time management, confidence, and concentration, it tends to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. The kids worry they won't do well, so they don't do well. So how can kids and teens feel less anxious and more confident? You start by working on strategies that actually promote confidence, and they start before the test. Changing how kids approach studying can make a big difference. Let's look at some strategies that can help. First, you want to know the test format. Understanding what type of test you're dealing with can be a big help. Is it multiple choice? Is it true or false? Is it going to have short answer questions? Is it an essay? Is it a combination? Just knowing the format won't necessarily make the anxiety go away, but it can help kids to feel more prepared and take away the shock they might feel when they're encountering unexpected variables on a test. And if it's possible to take some practice tests with similar items to what you're going to find on the real test, you do it. Next, reorganize the material. Consider what the main ideas might have been and what the class has been studying. For example, if you've been learning about a book, what are the big ideas or themes that keep coming up in class discussions? What are the central aspects of the plot? Is there anything the teacher seems to go back to again and again? Using questions like this as a guide, you can make an outline of the big points, events, and issues, and think about the themes that unite them. No matter what, you'll have some material for any question on this that might occur on the test. This is a more active style of studying. It can help kids think about what they've been learning in a different way from how it's presented. It can make them engage the material in a more active way and make it easier to understand and remember. The better you understand something, the harder it is to stump you. So next, we think about possible questions. What sorts of questions are likely to be on the test and how would you approach them? You want to be strategic. For example, if essay questions are hard for you and there's likely to be essay questions in the test, you can practice writing out a few answers just to get used to it, even if it's an outline or bulletproof form. Likewise, if you know there'll be some word problems, think about how the things you've learned in class might be turned into a word problem. Look at any word problems that already came up on homework assignments. So next we want to think about what you can do during the test. Everything before this has been prep. And even after you've done all you came to prepare, it's still good to be armed with some strategies for getting through the test and putting the brakes on any anxiety you might start feeling in the moment. So you want to have a plan. Kids who learn and use basic test taking strategies tend to feel more confident. For example, don't spend too much time on any one question. If it's a multiple choice test, read each answer. Cross out the ones that you know aren't right to help yourself narrow it down and feel like you're picking from a smaller set. When you pick an answer, stick with it. We all have a tendency to second guess ourselves and it can lead to wasted time and wrong answers. And if you finish every other question, you can always come back. Break things up. If you start to feel panicked, particularly in those big essay questions, you look for a way to change the focus. For example, if you see a question that really throws you off during a test, the kind of question that makes you think, oh my gosh, this is written in gibberish, or did I study this at all? You can instead turn to other pages and answer those questions first. Breaking up your routine can keep you from getting stuck or spinning out about a particular question. Practice calming techniques, and it's really appropriate to practice these before the test so you can call them up when you get into the test. What helps you to stay calm? 
a stress ball, some silly putty, maybe a cozy sweatshirt or other article of clothing, maybe it's some fun socks. Whatever it is, you try bringing it or wearing it on test day. And when anxiety strikes, you can use mindfulness practices like taking five deep breaths or counting to 10 while breathing or doing a few stretches or just trying to think about what you see and hear around you and being more mindfully accepting that to help you to feel less anxiety. Last thing is to accept when you don't know something. You really don't want to get bogged down or panic when you don't have an answer. Because the fact is, we will not know some of the answers. Sometimes the best way to manage your anxiety and your time on a test is to accept that you just may not know something, no matter how hard you search your memory, your hippocampus, or anything else, you just move on from that question. If you feel like the test was unfair and didn't give you a chance to show your knowledge, you can always approach your teacher later. You can ask maybe for a way to demonstrate your knowledge in a different way in future tests, or you can ask the teacher what you could have done better on this one. Finally, seek accommodations. Some kids who really struggle with test anxiety or who have learning disorders or ADHD may be eligible for accommodations during test time. Accommodations like extra time, breaks, quiet areas, or even modified test versions are available and can be a big help for some kids. If it seems like accommodations would be helpful, reach out to the school and ask what the process is for either going through a review for accommodations or granting accommodations. When kids start feeling like they've studied well and they know the material and they have strategies to fall back on, their attitudes going into a test will transform. And having the right attitude is important. The best test taking mindset that we can give kids is something along the lines of this confident self-talk of being able to say, I've prepared well, I have things I can do in the moment if the test is not going so well, it's okay if I don't know all the answers, bottom line is I'm gonna do my best. That's how we'd like them to approach things. To learn more, visit the Child Mind Institute Family Resource Center, which has hundreds of articles and guides to help you support children who are struggling with mental health or learning disorders. You can find the link in the description below. I'm Dr. Dave Anderson, a clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel below.